So thank you all for being here. I want to thank uh, Senator Wyden, Senator Blumenthal, Senator Franken will be here in a few more uh, minutes. My colleagues from the House of Representatives, uh, each of whom will uh, be speaking as well. Uh, Chairman uh, to be Frank Pallone, uh, uh, Congresswoman Anna Eshoo, Mike Doyle, uh, Doris Matsui, uh, Peter Welsh, uh, Jared Paulus, uh, uh, Jan Schakowsky, Sheila Jackson Lee. Uh, we have an all star cast who are here today. Uh, and because today's National Day of Action would not be possible if it weren't for all of the tremendous organizations joining us here today and fighting this battle every day where it matters the most online. Fight for the future, demand progress, free press, public knowledge, the Center for Media Justice, Common Cause, the National Hispanic Media Coalition, the Internet Association, Mozilla. Last night, Major League Baseball played its all-star game, but today we celebrate this Major League Online all-star lineup gathered here today and across the country to protest this Republican FCC's action. On this hot summer day, we are turning up the heat on the Trump administration and the big broadband companies. Today, the internet has gone on strike. More than, than 80,000 websites are participating in today's National Day of Action on Net Neutrality to stand up for the fundamental right to a free and open internet. Today's action involves some of the internet's biggest names, Netflix, Twitter, Amazon, Snapchat, Mozilla, Yelp, Airbnb, and so many others. 80,000 websites are part of this action today across the country. My website and many of the other Democratic offices have also joined in today's protest. We all stand here today in solidarity with the millions of organizations businesses, entrepreneurs, activists, and everyday Americans who say that we must defend network, net, uh, uh, net neutrality. The internet, this monumental, diverse, dynamic democratic platform is under attack. Big broadband and their Republican allies want to turn back the clock so that they can be the gatekeepers of internet access. And they have an FCC chairman and Ajit Pai who is doing their bidding. But we will not let this takeover happen. We are standing up to say a free and open internet is our right and we will fight to defend it. And, and that is why we are holding our own slowdown today to show the American people what a world without net neutrality would be like. Slower online speeds, fewer accessible websites, higher fees. That's why the broadband companies uh, want to kill net neutrality, but we cannot let them win. President Trump and his Republican allies are waging an all out assault on every front they can on our core democratic values, whether it's health care, immigration, climate change, on net neutrality. They want to end the vital protections that safeguard our families and to hand over power to corporations and special interests, but we know better. We aren't fooled when AT&T engages in alternative facts and says that they support net neutrality and today's day of action, they, in fact, don't support Title II, and they don't support net neutrality, and we must shine a light on this kind of corporate deception. The only thing that doesn't need net neutrality protections is Donald Trump's Twitter account. <laughs> but everything else does, and I am proud to stand here today with all of you 
on this historic Internet Day of Action to oppose any efforts to undermine net neutrality. This is an historic fight, and we have just begun. Now is the time. You are the people. We are going to make our voices heard for our democracy, for our economy, and for net neutrality. I thank everyone who is organizing today. This is the beginning of an historic fight for the Internet, and the people in our country are the ones who are going to win against these broadband giants. So thank you all for being here. And now let me turn, because we have an all-star cast uh, which is going to speak. Um, Ron Wyden uh, and I have been uh, working on this issue uh, for more than two decades uh, to make sure that the uh, net is wide open. I give you one of America's greatest champions of net neutrality, the great senator from the state of Oregon, Ron Wyden. Oh, thank you, Ed. Thank, thank you all, and friends don't filibuster friends. So I'm going to be, be brief, and we're very grateful to Senator Markey for putting this rally together. And I think I'd like to bring this home in terms of what we can all understand, because we have been in tough battles before, that nobody said we could win, like Pippa and Sopa. And I'll touch on that in a moment. The fact is that political change doesn't start in Washington, D.C., and then trickle down. It's bottom up. And today, we begin the next big battle. Now we are defending what we won once, which is strong net neutrality rules. But make no mistake about it, we are going to stay with this fight until we win. What is non-negotiable is throwing net neutrality rules overboard. That is what we're saying is non-negotiable today. And the reason why is without net neutrality, the internet as we know it, ends. Just that simple. And you know, they're talking about the companies. Well, let's have voluntary net neutrality. And you've seen how they've fought this in the past. Voluntary net neutrality would work about as well as my telling my nine-year-old son, William, that he's going to limit himself to one dessert voluntarily. <laughs> voluntary net neutrality isn't going to cut it, because with voluntary net neutrality, we're still going to have paid prioritization approaches, toll lanes, and make no mistake about where we go with that. We start heading back to an information aristocracy in America where the well-to-do have access to a technology treasure trove. And I guess folks of modest income can start thinking about dial-up again because that's what the world could look like. Net neutrality is especially a small business issue. We are going to push in this battle to make sure that everybody understands, and I had two meetings about this at home, this is absolutely key to the innovators who are going to create the new jobs in Oregon and around the country. If they have to wait to get information, they're not going to be able to compete with the big guys. So I want it understood that I am really proud to be with my allies you know, here, and I can just tell you, 44 senators were sponsoring that Pippa Sopa bill, which would have changed the architecture of the internet when I put a hold on it. And everybody said, you know, Ron's a nice guy and he's going to say his piece. Then we're going to have the vote and then we're going to get 80 votes. And we said, hey, there are a lot of people who spend more time online in a week than they spent talking about their senator in years. And you're going to be surprised. So four days before the vote, 15 million Americans called and texted and tweeted 
and said, no way, this is a loser for us. Today, we're going to start, as Senator Markey said, the long battle to make sure that just as Pippa and Sopa would have been a loser for America, gutting net neutrality is a loser for America. Today, we begin the bottom-up grassroots movement from every corner of this country. We've won on net neutrality before. Make sure you understand this group of members of Congress, we are in this fight again, and we will be at it until once again net neutrality is preserved and there's a free and open internet and so when you pay your access fee, you get to go where you want, when you want, how you want, and we have said no to trickle down, paid prioritization, toll lanes, all the things the big lobbies want, and we've said yes to a free and open internet. Thanks, everybody. Ron Wyden. Ron Wyden. Next, we're going to hear from great senator from Connecticut, Dick Blumenthal. Thank you, uh, thank you, Ed, uh, thank you, Senator Markey, Senator White, and all of our friends from the House for being here and for being so patient with us. We have a vote at 12.30. You understand uh, why we're sort of preempting the, the first few minutes here. Uh, let me just uh, be very blunt. I, for one, would in no way discriminate against Donald Trump's Twitter account. It is the way we're learning about the administration. <laughs> it is as much entitled to protection as any other free expression, and net neutrality is fundamentally about First Amendment freedom of expression. And this bottom-up movement, this citizen activism, will win the day for us because it is about the rule of law and fundamental freedoms. The FCC adopted an open internet order to preserve the internet as an open platform. We know Donald Trump loves walls, but he cannot put walls around the internet. Neither can Pi as chairman of the FCC, and the internet ought to be an open platform, a free and open platform, not a walled garden for wealthy companies. Let me just say finally, because uh, I think my colleagues are going to really be a lot more forceful than I. There is an immediate, clear, present threat to free expression, and it is called the AT&T Time Warner merger. Reports have indicated that the administration will use this merger as a way to crack down on free expression that they find antithetical to their interests. That is intolerable and unacceptable. I have asked the nominee for Assistant Attorney General for Antitrust in the Department of Justice to meet with me and assure me that those reports are inaccurate because inhibiting or impeding First Amendment free expression, whether it is by CNN, which is owned by Time Warner, or any other media outlet, is absolutely an anathema. It is an anathema legally, but also morally. And today's grassroots movement will make sure that this administration hears the voices of people who want the First Amendment rule of law upheld, who want free and open access to the internet, who want innovators to have the ability to access consumers and others, and who want the United States Constitution to be preserved against the threat, the real threat, that it may have today. Thank you so much for being here, and thanks to all my colleagues. Thank you, Dick. Thank you so much. Ne next, the lead Democrat on the Energy and Commerce Committee, Frank Pallone from New Jersey. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, Senator. I, I just want to stress a few points. First of all, I think it's very important for everyone to understand that right now, net neutrality is a law. A free and open internet is a law. And the only reason that that could change is because the Republicans, President Trump and the Republicans in Congress, want to change it. 
they are totally responsible for this. So when the FCC says, oh, you know, uh, uh, this is something that uh, we're reviewing, that, that's not the case. I wish it were, and I do want people to still come out and write to the FCC and email them and do everything because they could change your mind. But this is a Republican initiative to get rid of net neutrality. Second thing is innovation. Don't harm innovation. Save net neutrality. Some of the senators already mentioned it. To me, this is so important because that's what we're trying to do. The reason that the internet has, uh, an open and free internet has allowed so many jobs to be created uh, through small businesses. The reason people have been able to get training or apply for a job and find out what jobs are out there so they can improve their lives is because of the open internet. And most of the innovation that occurs today is through the small businesses that are going to be negatively impacted. You know, the big businesses say, okay, what's the difference if we pay a little more and, you know, we're going to speed things up and make it to our advantage? Well, they're, in many cases, the big businesses are the ones that are old and don't, you know, don't have any new ideas. It's the small businesses that have the new ideas. And I saw that in, in one of my towns, Asbury Park, New Jersey, a few years ago. Uh, people know it because of the music scene and Bruce Springsteen, but it hit very hard times. And over the last 20 years, that has changed. And we went to Asbury Park, we went to the Internet Association, we went to an incubator that had like 10 members and now has thousands of members. And what did they say? They said the reason we've been able to innovate, the reason that our small businesses in part have been able to create new jobs and grow is because of open and free access to the internet. That's what this innovation is all about. People can't uh, find a job or get training or find out how to you know, move to a different job or improve their lives anymore unless they use the internet. And if you slow that down, that is the little guy, it's the average American, and it's the innovators that are going to suffer. And that's one of the reasons, one of the major reasons why I think that what we're doing today and all of you doing here today collectively is so important. And I thank not only my colleagues, but the different groups that are here. Please contact the FCC. August 16th is the deadline. You know, I, 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 I don't have a lot of faith in them, but I still think that they could change their mind and the Republicans have to be responsive to the public to some extent. So go out there and make your voices heard. And you're going to introduce the next Beautiful. person. Yeah, but uh, next person is, uh, he is the, uh, the, I was going to say chairman, but I guess I'm not allowed to. <laughs> uh, we hope to be uh, chairman of our telecommunications and internet subcommittee. Great Thanks, job. Frank. Hey. Thank you, Frank. Eddie, thank you for being here today. Uh, I'm Mike Doyle. I represent Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Uh, and as uh, Frank just said, I'm ranking member of communications and technology uh, in the House on the Energy and Commerce Committee, where the fight for net neutrality has been going on for more than a decade. Uh, I've had the honor of serving and working with many of the members here today. We've been fighting to protect and promote a free and open internet for a long time. We have pushed and pressed administrations and Congresses for years to put in place strong, enforceable, open internet rules, and in 2015, we finally got them. Now the Trump administration and the ISPs want to take that away. I challenge my colleagues on the other side of the aisle to go back to their districts and ask their constituents whether they want a slower internet with fewer choices, less competition, higher prices. I challenge them to find small businesses and entrepreneurs who want a harder time reaching customers and doing business online. I challenge them to find innovators who want it to be harder to bring new ideas and new products to the market. I challenge them to find someone other than ISPs who think getting rid of net neutrality is a good idea. Well, we're here to tell them today that Americans don't want this. We have repeatedly told them, don't do this. 6.5 million people across the country have already told the FCC, don't do this. You have to tell them, don't do this. And then you need to educate your family, your neighbors, your friends about net neutrality and get them to tell the FCC, don't do this. Five, first, they came for our privacy protections now they're coming for our internet. Add your voice, take a stand, let's stop them. Um, next we have Doris Matsu, who's always a big active member of our committee as well. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. It's a pleasure for me to be here with all my allies. This is an important time that all of us must be involved in. We can ever, never, ever take anything for granted. We know how it is ever since the election. Don't ever stop. We're here today to really stand with small businesses, consumers, and innovators across this country to defend the free and open internet. We're sending a message to the Trump FCC that we're not gonna put up with their attempts to roll back net neutrality protections. The American people know what is at stake and they have been speaking up and they're gonna be taking action today and until good things happen. In my home district of Sacramento, local businesses and average citizens are concerned about what they stand to lose if net neutrality protections are taken away. Joel, one of my local tech innovators, said net neutrality means no matter who you are and what information you're looking for, you have the same level of access. And he also said there are no slow lanes and there's nothing there that's gonna keep you. This is all about fairness and democracy and not the aristocracy or the privileged. Children are doing homework online. Let's let them have the ability to compete. People are researching employment opportunities and they are going on the internet. Senior citizens are contacting their children all across the country. Do we wanna stop that? Net neutrality means a level playing field for competition and for communities like mine. That's why we need net neutrality, so that our small businesses can compete, our seniors can be involved, our children can learn, people can get employment opportunities so that we can stay connected in this country. We cannot let the FCC, the Trump FCC, decide our digital future. Millions of people have already shared their views, and we want to hear your voices also. It is so important for this country. We are leaning forward, not going backwards, and we want your commitment. So thank you very much. Thank you, Doris. Uh, next, uh, we have uh, another great member of our committee, uh, Peter Welsh, here to share some thoughts with us. Uh, thank you, Congressman Doyle. I did go back to Vermont, and I did ask Vermonters what do you think? You want to give up your privacy and now you want to give up uh, internet access? Um, I'm still looking to hear from anybody who thinks either of those is a good idea. We know that equal access to the internet is absolutely vital for all the reasons my colleagues have described. But here's the question I have to the proponents of changing what now works. Why? What's in it for anybody? Now, a lot of the proponents deny that what they want to do would in any way interfere with the access that people have now. Well, if that's the case, my question is why do it? If it's working so great and there is equal access and you're not intending to throttle, you're not intending to rip us off on prices, you're not intending to deny access, then why do it? That's the question and we know the answer. They want to do it because they have more dominance, they have more control, they have more pricing power, and that is going to grind down the opportunities for small businesses and individuals and kids doing homework. If it's working as the proponents of this change say the internet is working now, and they claim that even after their changes it will work the same, let's leave it alone and let it keep working as it is. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. And next, another great member of our committee, Jan Schakowsky. Thank you. I'm Congresswoman Jan Schakowsky from the 9th District of Illinois. And as I stand here, the, our phones are ringing off the hook in my office, all those people who are calling on this net neutrality day of action and saying, don't do it. Don't hamper our access to the internet. It is as if on the highways of our country, that they established two toll booths. Those people who could pay more can go into the fast lanes and all the rest of us would end up in the slow lanes. Of course, we wouldn't tolerate that. And as important as the members of Congress, the members of the Senate are, I think the people standing behind me are even more important. 
The people who are organizing, I've been an organizer for more than four decades. And I believe that what ha what's happening outside the Congress is actually even more important in setting policy than what's happening inside. People have to understand their power. And millions of people, Chairman Pai, have already made comments about what a disaster it would be for our freedom to communicate through the internet um, if they go ahead with this kind of policy. And so I am very excited about the mobilization. I see a lot of millennials behind me. If you think for one minute, Chairman Pai, that young people in this country, the primary users of the internet along with small businesses, and in fact, more and more senior citizens require having the kind of access that everyone deserves in this technology that is growing and growing. If you don't think that they, if you think that they're gonna quit in this fight, you are sorely mistaken. And when we fight, we win. My friends, when we fight, we win. win. Thank you. Thank you, Jan. And now we're gonna turn this over to the grassroots groups that have really been the, the spark plug for this fight. And uh, we wanna ask, uh, is Sean Bitka here? Sean, from Fight for the Future and Demand Progress. Uh, thank you. I, uh, I serve as counsel for both Demand Progress and Fight for the Future. Uh, that doesn't give me any more time, so I'm going to try to be quick. Something you may not have realized from the events in D.C. or the things that people have said so far is that the Title II net neutrality is not a left-right issue. It is bipartisan and everything in between. It is not only Democrats who are calling Congress today. It is not only the left who has organized millions upon millions of people to call and make their voices heard and to express their outrage about Chairman Pai's plan. We need members of Congress to hear that. And because it's so popular across the entire country and with all types of people, we know that this is the beginning, not the end, of our action. You will hear from us for the rest of the year. You will hear from us for as long as Chairman Pai tries to move forward this misguided plan. It is important that members of Congress take Another message beside the importance of Title II from today. We will remember your silence if you do not defend the internet now. Thank you. Hi, I'm Heather West from Mozilla, maker of Firefox. Um, Mozilla's mission as a company is to keep the internet healthy. It's a global public resource that should be open and accessible to all. Uh, one of the reasons that the internet is such a powerful tool for the economy and creators and innovation is because no one owns the internet. It, it means that all of us can create and benefit from it. Uh, the, for the future of our society and the economy, we need to keep it open. We need to keep it open, distributed, and decentralized. Uh, net neutrality is not an abstract issue. It has significant real world effects. Um, it is fundamental to online competition to ensure that we can choose which services and content we want to view and allows all voices to be heard freely. Net neutrality is fundamental to innovation and creators. Without, it, net, neutrality, without net neutrality, creators and entrepreneurs, new businesses would struggle to reach users. Net neutrality is fundamental to user choice. Without net neutrality, ISPs can decide, you just watched too many videos this month. I guess you're done. Um, we need to protect user rights and innovation online. We need to protect with enforceable net neutrality. Thank you. Um, good afternoon, buenas tardes. I'm Gloria Tristani. I'm a special advisor to National Hispanic Media Coalition. I'm also a former FCC commissioner. The National Hispanic Media Coalition is gravely concerned about doing away with net neutrality. For the Latino community, para la comunidad Latino, net neutrality is essential for us to be able to tell our stories, to do away with the stereotypes, the misrepresentations. It is essential for Latino entrepreneurs to get ahead and get organized. It is essential for Latina students to be able to get ahead in their careers. The assault that the current administration is doing on net neutrality is absolutely hideous because it will not only affect the rights of the Latino community, but of every American, the most fundamental right of free expression, of being able to organize politically. The internet has become the civil right of this century. Don't you forget that. 
Without the internet, we wouldn't be doing what we do. We wouldn't be finding out the things that are happening. I don't need to remind you of that. So my most important message is let Ajit Pai, let the FCC, let the Trump administration know by commenting, by calling, by organizing, by doing whatever you can, by having rallies, meeting, conference, todo lo que puedan, que they cannot take away our net neutrality and our free and open internet. La neutralidad de la red es esencial para la democracia. Thank you. Beautiful. Beautiful. Uh, hi, I'm Craig Aaron from Free Press and the Free Press Action Fund. I am so honored to stand up here uh, with such a great group of internet freedom fighters. I see common cause here, fight for the future, demand progress, public knowledge. Uh, the whole team, I think, here. Holden. So thank you all for being here. Uh, my allies at the Center for Media Justice, Voices for Internet Freedom, so many people who made this day possible. And I want to thank leaders like Senator Ed Markey, who have been unwavering in their support for the free and open internet. I remember standing right here in the Senate swamp when we collected the first million petitions ever in support of net neutrality. And that was in 2006. Uh, and back then, leaders uh, behind us, they thought the internet was just a series of tubes. Uh, but it's not. It's not just a truck either. It is a force for change. And the millions of people taking action today, the thousands of companies and organizations speaking out, the dozens and dozens of leaders stepping up here, they are not going to let Donald Trump and Ajit Pai take that away. I've been doing this for a long time. I've been doing this for so long that I can remember when AT&T was against net neutrality. The Internet's opponents keep thinking they can fool the public, that we will give up, that we will go away. But we've shown them again and again and again, from Save the Internet to Sopa Pippa to the Internet slowdown to today's day of action, that we won't go away, we don't go away, we come back stronger. With more allies, with more platforms, with more people who understand the tr transformative power of the open Internet and what's at stake if we get it wrong. They know that an open internet allows new businesses to compete, it allows innovation to thrive, it allows movements to grow, it allows us to speak to ourselves and to each other. They might not know the technical terms, but they know that the phone and cable giants cannot be trusted. They can't be trusted to show up between 10 and 2, and they can't be trusted with the internet's future. So let's be clear. The only real net neutrality is strong rules backed by the authority to actually enforce them. That means Title II, period. That's what, what we're fighting for today, and I believe we will win. I believe we will win because we have the facts on our side, we have the law on our side, we have the people on our side, and we have the internet on our side. And we're gonna keep fighting here, at the FCC, in the courts, in the streets, online, wherever we have to until the free and open internet is safe. So if you're watching the live stream, go to battleforthenet.com and join the fight. Thank you. Craig, and we're joined by the great Congresswoman from Silicon Valley, a woman who has dedicated her life to protecting the open internet, making it possible for her congressional district to help to reinvent the way in which people communicate, not just in the United States, but around the world. The great Anna Eshu, please. Yes. Great. Well, thank you, uh, Senator, my dear friend Ed Markey. Uh, I'm going to tell my kids what you said. There, that's uh, eminently quotable. I hope they appreciate it as much as I do. Uh, I want to thank all of the public advocates uh, and the uh, organizations that. Uh, uh, that have put today together and all the work that you've put into it. We really are standing on your shoulders and I salute all of you. Today is a national day of action and I think that uh, while um, it's uncomfortable to be in this uh, searing heat, we know that this is an issue that is as hot as ever and that is that the FCC through the new chairman is planning to wipe away the progress that we made to protect the internet. Now, just a handful of weeks ago, I brought together a roundtable in my district. 
in Silicon Valley. They were all uh, CEOs of startups. Uh, there was also a librarian and someone from the uh, venture capital community. Now, the case that the chairman of the FCC has made is, is that this is chilling investments in business, and therefore, it needs to be scrapped. But along with six million plus Americans that have written to the FCC, 800 companies have weighed in and said, don't touch the net neutrality protections. They're working. And this is what the startup people said. Eliminating net neutrality protections will lead to a decreasing interest to start businesses and a decrease in willingness to put yourself out there. Chris Riley from Mozilla referred to this debate as reality versus illusion. The rules are working. The rules are working. The CEO of Arch Systems, the internet is a platform of platforms. When you eliminate net neutrality and collapse this uh, platform, you decrease innovation by an entire order of magnitude. The librarian, the director of the Redwood City Public Library said net neutrality preserves intellectual freedom, freedom and promotes equitable access to information. Now there is something that the chairman keeps talking about, and that is, and I referenced it, that the chill of investment. There is not one CEO who is required under the law to give facts out to their shareholders that have said, not one CEO has said to their shareholders of these publicly held companies we are not going to invest because net neutrality has chilled investment. So that is a bogus platform on which to build one's case. Our case is strong. It's been tested in the courts. The American people stand with us and all of us together here today. I want to thank you all uh, for caring so deeply about this and uh, for all that you're doing. You know, uh, just a handful of weeks ago, something came out, and that is that Netflix has more customers than cable. So I don't think it's time to turn the hands of the clock back and bring about the cableization of the internet. The American people know that they don't like it. We know that that's looking in the rear view mirror and uh, uh, thinking that uh, uh, people see the future, it's the wrong direction. We're in the, on the right path. We know that the chairman is not on the right side of history and that together uh, we will prevail. Thank you to all of you. Beautiful. Thank you to all of you. Anna. Thank you. Beautiful, Thank you, Eddie. Thank you. Beautiful. And next, we're gonna hear from the great senator from the state of Minnesota, Al Franken. This is great. This is a, a terrific day. You know, uh, Paul Wellstone said the future belongs to, to those who are passionate and work hard. So thank you for being here. Thank you. And it's hard to hold up those signs while, while we blather here. Uh, look, two and a half years ago, uh, the best principles of our democracy won out when nearly four million Americans offered comments on the open internet order, making it the most commented issue upon issue uh, in FCC history. Uh, consumers urged uh, the commission to protect their unfettered and affordable access to content as it had always been. We've always had this architecture of net neutrality has always been the architecture of the internet since it was created by uh, DARPA, by the, by the, no, 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 don't, he didn't say that. Uh, this is, and this idea that net neutrality uh, actually 
uh, somehow tamps down investment couldn't be more untrue. I mean, that is, uh, bogus was a good word, because we can't use other words here. Uh, but let me give you an example. This is in a submission to the FCC uh, about keeping net neutrality by a coalition that included Visa, Bank of America, UPS, and Ford. And explain that, quote, every retailer with an online catalog, every manufacturer with online product specifications, every insurance company with online claims processing, every bank offering online account management, every company with a website, every business in America interacting with its customers online is dependent on an open internet. That, the, the idea that somehow we're not going to have innovation and we're not going to have investment because we have net neutrality is completely bogus because that has been all the investment we've had, all the innovation we've had has been with an open internet, with net neutrality. That is, it, it, it's so bogus, it's just insulting. And I think Chairman Pai should be ashamed of himself. Now this was a powerful moment about two and a half years ago uh, when Americans came forward. We need to do it again. It was a powerful moment because everyone Everyone except these ISPs benefits from an open internet. That's the only people who benefit from it. Our Comcast and Verizon and AT&T, that's it. It's, it's like a handful of companies. The, and, and not only is this about business, and it is about business and innovation, it's also about freedom of speech. Yes. Woo! Yes. Let's hear it for freedom of speech. Yes. Because of net neutrality, we're free to yell like that. No, no, that's not true. I, I overclaimed for net neutrality just at that moment. But everyone can see it online because of net neutrality, us yelling for freedom of speech. This means that Fox News and the New York Times and your political blog posts travel at the same speed. The last thing we need is a few mega corporations, mega corporations, controlling information and saying that, okay, if you have deep pockets, Fox, you can go at high speed. New York Times, you can go at high speed, but your political blog can't. What does that mean? That means the end of free speech. This is the First Amendment issue of our time. I, I just can't emphasize enough how important this day is how important this day is in pushing back against the FCC. This has been court tested. This is what the court said we need to do to keep an open internet, to go to Title II. That's what the court said. That's what the FCC did a year and a half ago, and we want to keep it that way, don't we? Yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you all. Beautiful. Well, well, thank you. Thank you, Al. Thank you, Al. And uh, finally, we're going to hear from Steve Renderos the, from the Center for Media Justice. Come on up. Oh, well, first, let's hear from uh, Sheila Jackson Lee, Congresswoman from the great state of Texas. Thank you. The Senator is my friend from many, many, many years. And thank you, Senator Franken, and everybody that has come uh, to stand in this hot sun. Look at my green glasses. I'm obviously ready to resist and ready to defend. Uh, net neutrality is not 
we did not come by it easily. And thank you all for all the organizers. Thank you for rejecting heat. Uh, Senator Markey, can I just make one point? A one trillion pound iceberg has just moved away from the Antarctica. And the only reason I say that is because sometimes people look at you. Oh, here these guys got a frivolous stand. They look at the climate change. Oh, here they go with their frivolous words again. I want you to know that this cause, climate change, social justice, all of these, net neutrality, are part of the rights of the American people. I call them the fundamental rights for the free exercise of the internet that belongs to the people of the United States and certainly beyond. And I want to join with those who can capture, as the FCC did, on the new technology that we have is the concept and idea of freedom of speech. It is important to make sure that we know that what net neutrality does is ensuring all of us equal access to an open flow of information whenever we log on to our computers or look at our phones or turn on our television. I want it to be the access for the little girl in rural Mississippi or the young man in a project in New York or somebody who uh, is, in essence, uh, at the low end of the economic stream, but we will open the doors of opportunity because they can have access to words and ideas and they can be free. <laughs> we cannot accept the rejection of everything Obama, the health care bill, climate change, now net neutrality rule that was adopted by the Obama administration were aimed to preserve the open internet and ensure that it cannot be divided into pay to play fast lanes for web and media companies that can't afford it and slow lanes for everyone else. But now the Trump administration wants to jettison uh, these protections. And so if I can conclude uh, my remarks by saying I stand for the First Amendment. I stand for freedom. I stand for unleasing, unshackling the internet and allowing people to access it, net neutrality. I stand in the fight. I stand to resist. I stand to empower those that are willing to open the internet, stimulate internet service provider uh, compensation. A free and open internet stimulates internet service provider compensation. A free and open internet helps to prevent unfair pricing practices uh, and as well, it promotes innovation, it spreads ideas, and it opens up entrepreneurship. And finally, yes, one of the great tenets of the Bill of Rights, the freedom of speech. Do you stand with me? Are you ready to resist? Are you ready to defend net neutrality? Are you ready to wear that banner? I am a fighter for the First Amendment. I am a fighter for freedom. Net neutrality, that is freedom. That is the First Amendment. And that is America. I yield oh, back. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. And again, finally, for the final time, Steve Renderos from Center for Media Justice. It's not the first time I've had to follow wonderful people like Representative Jackson Lee here and Representative Eshu, as well as Senator Franken. Um, but it doesn't make me any better prepared to do it. So. I actually participated in an event back in 2010 with Senator Al Franken, yeah. uh, a town hall that we hosted on the south side of Minneapolis at a high school. We packed in 500 people. And it was at that event that Senator Franken said what's been repeated over and over again, net neutrality is the first amendment of the internet. All right. My name is Steven Renderos. I'm the organizing director at the Center for Media Justice, home of the Media Action Grassroots Network. We, alongside our network of 100 social and racial justice organizations from across the country, fight for the media and digital rights of poor people and people of color in the US. An open internet protected by Title II is vital to the democratic expression of people of color. When the Muslim ban was announced by the current administration, it was an open internet that helped mobilize millions of people at airports across the country. When immigrants are viciously targeted and removed from our country, their families turn to an open internet to amplify their message, not one more. It is an open internet that allows black folks, indigenous folks, queer and trans communities to harness their collective voice and fight discrimination. 
That's why our members joined in in today's Day of Action. To trust that big corporations like Comcast or Verizon will protect our voices, as the chairman of the FCC wants, to, wants us to believe, is to accept a slow degradation of freedom of speech. We, alongside our allies here in Congress, across the country, and on the web, will never stop fighting for an open internet because our democracy cannot afford an internet without net neutrality. Thank you. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for being here. Uh, we, thank, uh, uh, we thank everyone across America uh, who is participating in this uh, internet slowdown day. Uh, we intend on making this by far the largest single demonstration of power online in the history of our country. And before the FCC ever votes on this, it's going to be very clear that there will be a small number of broadband companies uh, who want uh, net neutrality to be repealed, and on the other side, tens of millions of Americans who with the loudest possible online voices will be saying that the internet must remain open, that it must remain this incredible entrepreneurial engine of change in our country, of job creation in our country. So what do we know? And I'll just give you this one final fact, then I will go to questions from the audience. Number one, their argument is that uh, it is making it hard for the broadband companies to invest. Well, two years ago, the broadband companies invested $87 billion in the upgrade of their broadband networks, $87 billion. You know what happened simultaneously? That 50% of all venture capital in the United States went into software and internet startups, half of all venture capital in America. That was $25 billion. That's the right balance. The big companies investing $87 billion in their broadband upgrades, the smaller entrepreneurial companies able to gain access to $25 billion to start up the new companies, the new ideas, the new voices in our society, reinventing the American economy for the 21st century. That's what this battle is all about. It's about the small. It's about those who are voiceless. It's about those who otherwise can be squashed being given the opportunity to fully participate in this great American experiment. So we thank everyone here, you great heroes, the grassroots heroes, the online grassroots heroes uh, who are going to make it clear to our country that this is an issue with razor blade sharp political edges, that there's going to be a price to be paid for trying to repeal this great concept of net neutrality which has served our country so well. So thank you all so much for being here. Are there any questions from the press that they might want